KSI has been knowingly working with criminals. Yeah, you heard me right. Your child's favourite YouTuber, KSI, has been knowingly working with criminals to promote products to your kids. Don't believe me? Well, sit down, grab yourself a mocha, as I explain how KSI has been knowingly working with criminals to scam your children. So, to begin with, I'm going to talk about the much-beloved drink, Prime. KSI and Logan Paul brought out a drink that they swear is not targeted to children, when we all know that that is not the case. Just look at the branding and the colours. But I'm not going to get into the technicalities of why the drink in particular is awful for not only you, but especially your child. I will show you the suspicious timings of the Prime release and what has been proven to be Logan Paul's biggest scam... CryptoZoo. CryptoZoo was a huge pump and dump scam that Logan Paul created and promoted to whatever following he had left after the multiple controversies he found himself in over the years. It was initially announced and released around July 2021, with pre-sales and the token going live on the crypto market. Over the next five months, Logan was actively involved with promoting and marketing the scam. The thing that I'm most excited for, and this is the first time I've ever said anything about this, for the last six months, I've been working on my own NFT project that uh, I believe is going to change the game because as of now, there's a model that uh, a lot of people in the crypto space have identified, and that's releasing a set number of unique assets, <clears throat> each with different characteristics, and you're kind of crossing your fingers, your project pops off, right? CryptoPunks, there's 10,000. Pudgy Apes or <laughs> board apes, 10,000, pudgy penguins. Uh, I think there's like 8,888. There's a set number. And it's it's all just the same thing, just rewrapped into different skins and you hope there's enough hype and a community around to build um, value in your project, right? I think, there ne- I think there needs to be a fresh take. And this project that I have uh, is that fresh take. September 1st, cryptozoo.co. I'm gonna tease it. That's all I'm gonna say about it now. Uh, because we're finishing up the the development, but I am so excited about this project. It's 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 so fun. It provides a yield with a token, can earn you money. And uh, as a person who understands, I think the NFT space enough to know what works, what people want, and what they're looking for. I think my game is gonna make uh, make some waves. So it actually is. Stay on the lookout for uh, Crypto Zoo. Coming. I didn't know you had a date, bro. Hey, September question: 1st, How do, that's why, why, uh, yeah. how do we <laughs> invest in it? Then suddenly, in the new year of 2022, Prime is announced to the world, and nothing is heard or seen from CryptoZoo for the next two months. Could this be because Logan was too busy promoting his latest moneymaker, doing promotion shoots and tours with the one and only KSI? Because you guys started off as rivals, then started punching on, and then thought, you know what, we can do shit together. I almost didn't do it. Why not? (laughs) Why? Because everything was moving so fast, I got, like, panicked. JJ was concerned about the timeline. Wow. Not just panicked. It was a last minute ditch. The day before 10 million bottles were going into production, he left the group chat. KSI left the chat. Waiting to see what JJ says. He's deaf sleeping. JJ awake now? KSI left. Like he was responding last night. And his manager calls me and goes, Yeah, man, it's not really working out. JJ, like, he's not going to be able to do the, the, the project with you guys. And I'm like, Dude, what are you fing saying? Yeah. It's going into production tomorrow. Yeah. This is a mess bro so i called him up and i was like hey man remember bro i, I called you like i want to do this with you i think it's a great f-ing idea i don't know if i can like comfortably move forward without you bro it just wouldn't it would, honestly wouldn't feel right i just want things to slow down a little bit mm. that was the phone call that saved the product is that what happened essentially yeah we, we were able to get him why on were you the, so on the nervous yeah, KSI, why is it were you because so you put do you have to put in your own money for it is that uh, what it was no, it was just moving so fast like with me i'm really particular with like mm. like what speed are you like stone is and he was right, by the way, to be prudent with what he's putting his name on. Like, how can he trust that me and some guy who he's never met from America <laughs> yeah. are yeah, making this? Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it was crazy, but I mean, dude, thanks. Thanks 
you trust you guys, man. If you would like to know more about the known scam that is CryptoZoo, I highly recommend going over and watching CoffeeZilla's videos for the details. This is not the only time that Logan was involved in known pump and dump schemes, however. It is the most provable one. Now, I know that dealings like this on the crypto market are not necessarily illegal, but it is shady business practices. Now, I hear you loud and clear. This has to be a coincidence, right? How would KSI know about this? Just because Logan was involved in something shady before launching Prime with KSI doesn't mean he knew. Well, I would agree with you there until they decided to bring out Lunchly with, of course, Logan, his partner in Prime, and who else? The one and only king of YouTube, Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast has found himself in some real dark controversy lately. I'll highlight only a few to give you an idea of the person that KSI has decided to launch yet another product with at a very questionable time. Mr. Beast has pushed the persona on his videos as the nice guy of YouTube, with most of his videos either giving away money or giving random people a chance to win the most ridiculous sums of money. We have Squid Games and Last to Leave, just to name a couple. However, the charitable persona we have seen through Beast Philanthropy and sometimes even on his main channel is not everything we thought it to be. Jimmy Donaldson has been accused of charity baiting, a concept where he pulls on the heartstrings of the viewers for the clicks, views and engagement on his videos. This is shown more recently as it has been discovered he has faked and altered videos after filming to make it seem like he's done more for the people or place he is claimed to be helping. For example, the hospital he claimed to have built in Nepal not only was the first picture and footage of the building altered to look worse, but an entire section of the building was cut so he could claim they built the entire hospital, when in reality, it just got a much needed renovation. Why would you not just show what you've actually done? The renovation in itself is an amazing thing to have done, but he doctored and altered footage to make it look like he was doing more. Not convinced? What about this? The building in this village he built? That's fake. It's been altered in editing to look as if more has been done. You can tell with the movement here. Now, this alone doesn't make him a criminal per se. It just adds into the falsity of the character we have been force fed. It is known that powerful and influential people in the past have used the guise of charity to hide their real selves from the public. This has been seen by Jeffrey Epstein, Harvey Weinstein, and more recently, P. Diddy. Mr. Beast has also been accused of promoting gambling to his child audience, with the numerous sweepstakes, controversial apps, and arguably even the promotion of his own YouTube channel, it is clear that he has promoted gambling in some sort to his audience. However, it has since come out from multiple sources that Jimmy himself has a gambling problem, which is being confirmed in clips from interviews and podcasts. Right, we had a baby. wild ending to to our gambling. Oh, too. whoa! Yeah. Well, you gambled with LP. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. LP. So listen to this. LP was down. <laughs> LP was down <laughs> racks on blackjack, and he has. You're one, high stakes gambling. Yes, me? we'll do it again tonight. Okay. He has one <laughs> dollars left in one chip, one yeah. yellow win chip. I'm down. <laughs> I'm like. Well, and you put on throws it on eleven black, and I go on it with him. <laughs> eleven black, bro. Back in, right the back, back in the game. That's funny. Yeah, like I said last <laughs> night. I hey, Doggo. I uh, I played a heads up with someone. I turned ten grand to fifty. Way so, to go! Yeah, that's fine. And then I went to the roulette table and I wanted to put it all in black. And they're like, "You can't do more than ten grand." How annoying is that? Yeah. I'm How like, annoying I, is that? I was like, "Here, take I, my money, I, take exactly, it, or not." Maybe I, I, I literally was so close to be like, "Can I just give you thirty grand of this so I can bet?" Just out of spite. You can call and have like a host. Set it's up a it's in my. I'd wear. I'd like Ch Ch Chase can help you. It's, uh, no, 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 no. Listen. I actually won a couple million dollars gambling one time. So whenever I gamble, I just pull from my little gambling fund. And so anytime I gamble, I just pull money out of that account. So it's great because it's all pure profit. It's not like my normal money. When I play with that, I don't give them. It's just great because that's why yeah. I win a lot. Because someone can put like 300K in and like, I just don't give it because I don't touch that money. It's only there for gambling. So I'll just call it. And then Whoa. you put them in these awkward <laughs> positions and they get really nervous. And that's how you of get course. a lot of pots. This itself might not convince you, but in technicality, it does make him a criminal as the laws in the US are different. You are not allowed to gamble under the age of 21. And he has admitted on several occasions to gambling at the age of 19. Gambling. I used to gamble a lot. Really? Fun times, yeah. You're, Wait, you're not you're even- You're 20. Yeah, you're not even- don't, don't ask that question, but. He has used illegal gambling sites like Bustabit, which is banned by law in the USA. He says, 
oh shit, that's probably the stupidest thing I've ever done. What you can see in the reflection of these large windows at night is the Bust a Bit website. On top of this, it has been alleged that he was involved in pump and dump schemes of his own with a coin called Refinable. He may not have promoted it himself, however, he did follow them on Twitter, let them use his likeness to promote it, and got paid an exorbitant amount of Refinable when it came onto the market, only for him to sell it at his highest when he was clear he was one of the biggest holders of the coin, in turn, making it tank. In this clip, there is a slight admission of market manipulation with none other than Logan Paul, where Mike, the co-host of the podcast, even calls it out and they try their best to defend it. Crypto's been killing it, man. Especially for you. Agreed. I mean, and I mean, you've been doing pretty well as, as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, you know, I like the space. I remember you called me, um, maybe like eight months ago, and you're like, yeah. Hey, <laughs> you, go, you go, yeah, just put a million and a half into Bitcoin. You know, I'm pretty excited <laughs> yeah. about it. Let's watch you yeah. <laughs> I'll show you my portfolio after this. But I also, so me and Logan both bought punks. You guys have probably seen on his Twitter that uh, he bought a bunch of crypto punks at the same time, right? Yep. Like Gary pulled us yep. in that call. Yep. So have you ever told that story? No. Uh, Gary V, it's like fucking <laughs> 11 p.m. Just out of nowhere, just calls me. And he's like, yo, I got like 30 people to call hop in. I'm like, oh, I don't give I don't care. He's like, it'll be the best decision of your life. Just get in. I'm yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. And so I just joined the call. And I just see like Logan and... I, I don't even know these other people. I don't want to put them on blast. Every heavy hitter you can imagine exactly. that was worth a billion dollars was on this one call. And Gary V is in the little corner, the little square. Yeah. He's, he's going, Crypto Punks, it's going to be huge. It's going to be the next Facebook. We're, all of us were like, Okay, Everyone's Gary. Judging. I'm texting Logan. I'm like, like is this, Gary is lost this his legit? Mind. <laughs> all of us are like, yo, Gary's nuts. Yo, Gary was right again. Yeah. What well, the fuck? Oh, we got to keep the story going. So there's like all these like um, very successful people in this call. And Gary's just like, everyone shut the fuck up. Here's what you're going to do. And you're going to do it right now. You're all going to buy a bunch of crypto punks. And we're all just like, he's like, who here owns one? And like one guy raised his hand. And it's because Gary bullied him into buying it the day before. <laughs> I was just so pulled by his like conviction yeah. that I bought. A bunch. I wait, mean, wait, wait. Yeah, I bought quite a few. How many? Uh, I, I, I want to say, but you I, have to I, I, you have to. I bought multiple ones. Yeah. Well, bro, are you in double digits, punks? Uh, double, just shy. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah, cool, yeah. cool. 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 So, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> all right, well, uh, he's imagine just said sixty. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Three I, I, zombies. I, I bought like eight of them, and um, they, they did pretty good. And any uh, any zingers? Any like real special? Yeah, I had, ones? I had some that like whatever twenty thirty x. What's a what's a? Uh, we we a, bought a lot with like the cigarettes because I cool. thought that was an interesting attribute, and those those did pretty well. What's another characteristic? Like, what's your rarest characteristic punk? So then I rolled the money into V friends because I Gary same thing called me. He's like V friends. I was like I don't fucking know, but last time I made money, sure, sure. Can I ask you guys a question? When when Gary does that call with all these billionaires and uh, eight months or a year later everybody's like gary was right again <laughs> yeah. is it possible that he's right because of the call do you know what i'm saying I, like I think about that like a lot. dude he has all these billionaire market makers in the thing he makes the call makes the market by the way you look around at all the punk owners a year later and you're like damn it's all the same motherfuckers that were on the call no because bro there's, there's ten thousand punks and there's only like 30 of us in the call we can only own and do so much there's still an entire yeah, yeah, market yeah. that's gonna happen regardless right. i can tell you i don't think why because that was all back like early February. Like, right, right. The things didn't pop off till later. There have been people that worked with Mr. Beast that have claimed that people close to him have stated that if they were to do what they're doing in the crypto markets over in the stock markets, then they would be in trouble. Now, as this might seem like not a big deal in the grand scheme of things, what has been emerging from the contestants about his new prime show, Beast Games, has proven once again the type of shady character Jimmy Donaldson really is. Before filming even started, it was destined to fail. Not only were the contestants misled about the number of participants, there were 2,000 instead of the publicly announced 1,000, but they were also deceived in what they were filming for. Most of them believed that they were filming for the Prime show, when in fact, they were filming for a preliminary YouTube video for the Mr. Beast channel. Again, this in itself doesn't prove much, but the way contestants have been treated by the staff and even Jimmy himself proves to be more than questionable. They not only refuse people their basic human rights like food and water, but they even refused giving people their medication when they needed it. There was at least one recorded instance where they refused to give a diabetic their insulin at their dosing time, forcing them to wait hours and sometimes days. After explaining to participants that they needed to bring a bag full of clean underwear for five days, the crew then took the bags and distributed the clean underwear as and when on their time. However, 
there were multiple instances of staff refusing people the underwear. There are reports of women menstruating during filming and with one woman pleading for clean underwear and staff mocking and laughing at her. There's also been reports of women not even getting their underwear back. After one woman left the competition, she was handed a $1,000 consolation prize only to be told to hand it back when the cameras turned off and not be paid. This is more than enough to prove that the staff members treated contestants badly. But what about Jimmy? After starving people of food for hours and sometimes days, he gave people feastables to record their reaction for free promotion of his product. A spokesperson for the Mr. Beast team has responded telling the traditional media that unexpected logistical issues had come up and they know what not to do in the future. This is not the first time where logistical issues have come up in Mr. Beast filming where it is genuinely dangerous for the people involved. With allegations of a car crash during the filming of I Was Hunted by the FBI, where they didn't vet the so called agent for the video. These messages claim that the FBI agent purposely ran the talent off the road as he had a PTSD trigger during filming. They paused shooting, only to begin again 12 hours later with a new FBI agent, which was also not properly vetted in such a short period of time. Now, as all of this has been coming out about Jimmy Donaldson, also known as Mr. Beast, you would imagine he would keep his head down, try and fix issues within his company, and maybe release a statement about some of the things that have been released. No. Instead, he launches Lunchly, a meal kit to rival Lunchables that includes Feastables and Prime. Is this to get rid of old stock that hasn't been selling, maybe? But you have to admit, the timing is very coincidental on KSI's part, considering the weird timing with the launch of Prime and Logan's CryptoZoo scam. Could these products be cover-ups of the controversy? well-timed releases to get people talking about something other than the nefarious dealings that they've been doing? Or is it the opposite? Shady dealings and planned controversies to promote the products to the public? After all, no press is bad press, right? Now, the shady business practices of these men should be enough to prove that KSI is knowingly going into business with criminals to scam your children out of your hard-earned money. But to prove to you these are not just coincidences, after all of the backlash KSI has been receiving about his poor choices in business and the way that he has been reacting to criticism from other YouTubers, he made an entire video and then decided to try and apologise using a fake link on his Twitter page. Some say the link loads into a promotion for his new song, some claims it's an IP grabber. Whatever it is, he has done whatever he can to make sure he doesn't take responsibility for his actions. That is all for this video. Don't forget to subscribe so you're notified on my next crime case. And like the video if you really did like the video. Also, comment down below your thoughts on these YouTubers and any cases that you would like me to look into. It could be my next one.